I was able to do what I love regardless of how much I made. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Carrie Kemp and yeah, this is an exciting video to tune into because I'm gonna talk all about the move because that's what everybody wants to talk about. I put a questionnaire thing in my stories on Instagram. If you're not following me already, you should be. The Carrie Kemp spelt just like this. Um, but a lot of people wanna know about the move. There were some like random questions that I'm gonna cover first. Um, and then I will get into all the juicy questions about the move. So, for very first question, um, I'm not going to give out anyone's usernames because I didn't ask for permission first. I wish I would have. So I'm sorry um, if you were looking for a little shout out. Just let me know. I I'm happy to shout people out. No problem. Um, but who is your hero and why? So um, about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, I posted a video about me getting TSS and... Um, within that video, you guys found out that my mom uh, actually saved my life that day. So uh, the doctor had misdiagnosed me basically, and then I went home, was getting worse. The EMT, so my mom was like, I'm calling the ambulance, you're going to the hospital kind of thing. I didn't want to go, um, I just was not feeling good. Uh, you can hear the whole story on the TSS video, but uh, she was like, well, you're going. And she fought with the EMT um, paramedics with the paramedics, EMT paramedics, they're both the same thing, uh, the paramedics, and she was like, no, take her in, and so she did, uh, they did, and thank God, I was eight hours from dying, so she not only gave me life, but she saved my life, and that is why she is my hero. Um, sorry, I'm just reading through all the uh, moving questions. I'm gonna answer all of those at the end of the video, so you can skip forward if that's all you're here for. Um, do, do, do. how long have you been modeling? Is this all you do? This is a great question because I feel like a lot of people uh, don't know a whole lot about what I do. So how long have I been modeling? Officially in July, it'll be four years. Um, but I, I guess I was like taking it seriously then, but I was working a full-time job and um, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into, anything like that. Uh, it wasn't until I moved to Toronto um, almost three years ago now that I really took it into uh, my own hands. I ended up getting a job with Your Big Sister's Closet, as all you guys know, uh, in February of 2017. 18, no, 2018, sorry. February 2018. Um, so two years ago. And that's when things kind of like took off for me in a sense. Um, I still had to work super, super hard for it. It took me um, from February until January, so almost a full year, to get to 10,000 followers. And that was me posting every single day, doing all the things, going to all the social events, all the castings, all that kind of stuff. Um, anything, Any event that was going on, I was there um, just trying to mingle and understand the community a little bit better. Um, so... From there, uh, yeah, that's, oh, is that all I do? Um, no, that's not all I do. So I was in business for 10 years prior to going into modeling. Um, and so I have, uh, I've been doing like little odd jobs or I was doing little odd jobs in Toronto um, from bookkeeping for my husband to being a receptionist at some companies. Um, it's something that I don't really talk about a whole lot because it's not really exciting. Like it's not where my passion is. Um, so I don't really talk about it, but it's, it was like a little bit of money helping here and there. Um, and then also like volunteer work. I love volunteering and helping people. And so whenever I could, I got out and I volunteered, um, between my church and other nonprofits. Um, if there was an event, I, I tried to be there, um, as much as I possibly could. Um, I love giving back. That is a huge part of why I started all this is because I wanted to give confidence back to people who um, struggle with it and struggle to find it. And so that's that. Uh, so yeah, um, I also with being a model um, and my following uh, kind of going up, uh, that's when influencing came into the picture. Um, and brands started reaching out to me and wanting me to 
uh, wear their clothes on my Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't understand this whole industry and I still, like, it actually frustrates me a lot, the industry, um, because a lot of companies don't pay. And at first I was like, hey, this is really cool, getting free stuff. But then it was like, wait a second, you're making so much money off of me and you're just giving me free clothes that you get at wholesale price. And like, of course you pay shipping and duties and all that kind of stuff, but it's like, no, 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 no. Like if you see value in me, you can pay me kind of thing. And that actually took me a long time to realize. Um, and now I don't do anything for free other than Fashion Nova because Fashion Nova seen me when I was at a very um, low rate um, or like low following, I guess you could say. So it was when my account was fairly small that they recognized me and they stayed consistent with me. And so um, I am staying consistent with them until they don't want to work with me anymore kind of thing. And I like their clothes, so I don't mind um, mind doing it. I mean, I like all the clothes that I get. Like, I'm not going to share with you guys clothes that I don't like. There are lots of companies that I've turned down. A lot of money that I've actually turned down, to be honest, um, because they just don't align with my morals and values, their company. And so, and no, I'm not going to share them because I'm not messy and dirty like that. Um, just keep an eye out. That's all. <laughs> That's all I say. <laughs> um, if I haven't worked with them, either A, they're too much money. Like the, the cost for me to personally buy them is too much. And I'm not going to just go out of my way to spend a whole bunch of money on clothes when... I, I don't know, like it's really hard to explain, but I was very frugal when spending money on clothes before any of this happened, and so that hasn't gone away. Like I'm not just gonna go out and spend a ton of money on clothes just because I'm in this industry. Um, if brands wanna work with me and all that kind of stuff, I'm happy to, uh, but yeah, I'm rambling. So I'm, I'm just gonna move on. If you guys wanna know more about all of this, don't hesitate to ask, because I'm very open and honest about it. Um, I pride myself on being open and honest because I feel like this industry is filled with a lot of unknown, I guess. And I actually moved to Toronto thinking that people could live off of, like, that, this, um, this industry. Like, I thought that I could live off of being a model when I first moved there. I didn't understand the influencing part of it. And then once I understood the influencing part of it, I'm like, why aren't people, why are people still like working a full-time job? And it's because there is not a lot of money in this, especially for Canadians. I don't know how it is for Americans, um, but Canadians, because um, there's the duties and all that kind of stuff that goes to back to the company. Um, it's, it is hard for Canadians to uh, get going in this and to make a living off of this. If it wasn't for my husband, I would not have been able to afford living in Toronto and doing what I was doing at all. And yes, I brought in money, it just was not enough to live. At all, not even close. <laughs> um, no question, just wanted to wish you well. Aw, I love you girl, you know who you are. Um, won't Katie be lost without her wonder twin? I'm lost without my wonder twin. Like she moved to Hamilton um, a couple months ago and even that was hard, like trying to get together with her and all that kind of stuff. And it, that's only like an hour with good traffic away. Like I, she is going to be one person that I miss the most and a hundred percent we will see each other again. There's no if, ands, or buts about that and we're going to keep in touch. But, um, yeah, I already miss her. It's sad. Um, how did you become a social influencer? I think I answered that with the modeling question. Um, it was just basically working at your big sister's closet and doing all the events. Um, that year I actually went and, uh, partook in, uh, the McDougal, This Is Why I'm Fabulous. I met up with a lot of amazing, amazing individuals there and I just did all the things. That first year I did, I spent so much money. Um, was it worth it? Probably not because in the end I'm not making what I thought I would. Like I never have made that money back um, that I spent that first year, but that's okay. In my opinion, I learned um, and uh, fortunately my husband and I have set ourselves up 
that we are we can rely on one income that's been our whole thing since we started dating was to create a life that um if we decided to have kids we could live off of one income and so that's been our whole thing like we haven't gone into major debts other than mortgages uh so that's if you guys want to talk about finances i'm happy to talk about finance i love money and i love talking about money i am very 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 frugal in so many ways i am a budget ho fo show and um i believe in budgeting and smart spending and not buying more than you need to of course i splurge of and Scott and I go on vacations, like beautiful vacations, but we are very smart about those vacations. And so if you ever want to talk about money and all that kind of stuff, uh, I, I love talking about money, but I know that it makes some people uncomfortable. So I don't dive into that a whole heck of a lot. I don't make a lot in modeling and influencing. I do not make a living. I'm going to say that over and over and over again in this video because I feel like a lot of people seen my life and they were like, oh my God, she's making so much money. And She's like working with all these amazing brands, which is so cool. And that's why I continue to do it is because it was never about the money. It is about you guys and the audience that I get to connect with, the people that I get to connect with. And that's, that's the most important thing is that um, I was able to do what I love regardless of how much I made. And I think that that's why I stand out in so many ways is because it's not about the money to me. It is about the difference. Um... So, yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> Favorite clothing brand? Um, I wouldn't say that I have a clothing brand per se. I'm not a brand hoe. I guess Nike maybe. <laughs> I'm always wearing Nike. Um, but it's like it doesn't need to have a name brand on it for me to like it. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Um, and I've always been that way. Like I've never really looked and been like, oh, I need to have Chanel. Um, there was a point there that I really liked Michael Kors, and I still really like Michael Kors, their purses and stuff. But it was because of the aesthetic of the purse. It wasn't the brand itself, I found, anyway. Because I would go into Kate Spade, and I just, it wasn't the same for me. So, yeah, that's that. What are you reading right now? Uh, so Scott and I are still doing that 30-day kindness challenge, and so I'm reading that book. Um, so that's fun. And also the Bible. Because <laughs> with everything going around, I, I'm taking this time to just become closer uh, in relation to Jesus and just feeling his love and his comfort during this difficult time. So that's what I've been doing. Are you planning a pro model tour? That would be amazing. If somebody wants to send me on tour, done. I would 100% do it. I think that that would be so much fun um, once this coronavirus just leaves because we need it to leave <laughs> but um yeah that it I mean that's the goal is to be able to reach uh everyone and just share light and positivity and love regardless of your size regardless of your sexuality regardless of your skin color like I just want everyone to come together and just support each other and love each other and we all have so many amazing strengths and if we could just get past those like little differences whether you're re religious or not who cares it doesn't matter whether you like um worship the universe i still want to be friends with you you don't have to believe in what i believe in and i don't need to believe in what you believe in but we can still live cordially and still have a normal conversation like it's not my life isn't surrounded by one thing it's surrounded by so many things and so i think that if we just let go of those stereotypes and like what one person thinks versus another, I think that this world would be incredible, but I know that that's never gonna happen. I'm just very hopeful and I love everyone until they show me that they don't love me and then I'm like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> um, you seem so progressive. How will you manage living in Alberta? Um, I'm not really sure how to answer this question. Um, I am from the prairies, so this is nothing new to me. I know what living in the prairies comes with, the challenges, the advantages and disadvantages. Um, the beautiful thing about Calgary is it is reasonably priced living, so I'll be able to fly and have that budget to come to Toronto a lot more often, or a lot more often? I guess I wouldn't be coming there more often because <laughs> I live there, but I'd be able, like, I'm going to be able to afford to fly to Toronto um, a lot if I want, like, if there's events and stuff, like, 
it's reasonable to fly there and I have so many friends and stuff that have already offered me their place which is incredible I love you guys all uh, so yeah there's I don't know like I just see so much good out here um, people are just so busy in Toronto and as much as people think that they're progressive they're also like super far behind in a lot of aspects as well in my opinion and um, yeah I don't want to like dig too much into that but People in um, the prairies are very like take care of your neighbor and I never ever felt like that in Toronto. Um, I met some incredible people who I absolutely love and adore um, and so of course I'm not talking about everyone in Ontario just like I'm not talking about everyone in Alberta when it comes to take care of your neighbor but um, yeah it's it like there's pros and cons to both. Um, don't Try not to stick your nose up too much of the prairies. There's a lot of good in the prairies, I think. And I've always said that. Uh, when are you coming to Vancouver? I come to Vancouver, yeah. It's, I, I'm sure I'll be there at one point. Um, I have family and Scott has friends out there. Of course I have friends because uh, they are Scott's friends, so they're my friends too. But um, yeah, uh, definitely going to be hitting up Vancouver eventually once all of this goes away. Corona. Favorite dress right now, it is actually this pink one behind me. Whoop. Uh, the one that I got from Fashion Nova. I just love it. I love how springy it is. Um, and it's just very feminine. And I, I just, I love her right now. <laughs> how do you manage to stay so positive? This is a good question. And it's one that I get quite a bit. Um, I stay positive because I look back on all the things that I've gone through. And I don't talk a lot about my past. Um, nor will I talk about my past because um, although it helped helped define me, it's not who I am today. And seeing everything that I've overcome, um, it has only made me stronger. And like I see the outcome of everything that I've overcome being a positive because of how much strength I gained from it. Um, I was once fired from a job and it was a job that I thoroughly enjoyed like I loved that job and it was because of a certain individual unfortunately things just turned sour um and I and en I ended up losing my job when it should have been them who lost their job and so um that was like heartbreaking and getting through that and like seeing the job that I got next that I couldn't have even imagined getting like it was my dream job my dream dream corporate job um that I got and such an incredible boss that who's now my friend um like I just see so much positive after every single challenge like during that time that I got fired I was at my lowest and I was just miserable and I could not like everything in life I just felt like it was all crumbling um but I ended up coming out on top and had I not been fired from that job I probably would still be there and I wouldn't have the life that I have right now. So I just see all the negative things in life and how much better my life has become because of it. Um, that's that's all I do. I just pray that God sends me, uh, like directs me through these clouds and that's where God comes from is the clouds. So I know that through everything there is good um, and I focus on that good because there is bad and I, I understand that and I feel that and in the moment don't get me wrong like when uh, we were first told that we had to self-isolate I was so down and I had done that one post where I was just like you know what I can't talk about it um, but now I'm okay with it and it just takes time and you have to allow yourself that time and like just wording your thoughts to be like I also like quit watching the news and all that kind of stuff and I just distance myself from all the negativity that goes on around me and that includes people like I've had to take people out of my life who weren't very positive positive. and so like it's everything in my life that yeah I just made a, a very positive life change every time and so I continuously do that I make positive life changes through everything Whew. That's a big question. That's a loaded question. Um, okay, so we got a this or that. So 
Heels or flats? So that depends on the occasion. I really like heels, um, but I can't walk in them for a long period of time. So um, heels for events and flats for just like running around. And then Christmas and New Year's. Christmas, of course. I freaking love Christmas. Um, Netflix or Sky Movie. I've actually never heard of Sky Movie, so I'm going to say Netflix. Sports or no sports? Sports every day, all day, you know how we play. <laughs> um, dress or trousers? I'm going to say dress, even though I wear pants a lot. Um, it's not the season for dresses right now. So I'm going to say dresses when it's the season. Uh, so that's all the this or that. Uh, where do you buy bras? I get mine at Licenza, uh, Levy and Rose, because I am part of that itty bitty titty committee. But if you're busting it down on a bus line, um, I've heard that Torrid and Additionnel have awesome bras. Um, okay, so now how did the whole move go? I'm just going to talk about all of this. How, so first off, what was the craziest thing you saw on your road trip? It was like the lack of vehicles on the road. Um, we didn't do too much crazy stuff because we just wanted to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this move. Okay, so the plan was Scott had started. So basically what has had to happen. Now we're going to get into it. 22 mark, let's get into it. So full story. So um, Scott and I had been discussing for months moving. We had always been looking at the... so. I told him that I wouldn't move anywhere that didn't have a international airport, meaning that you could go to like the cool, cool Caribbean islands where in Saskatoon, you can only go to like Cuba, Mexico, Dominican and Jamaica. I wanted to be able to go to like Antigua, Bahamas, Barbados, like all those cool Caribbean islands. So I wanted to have a, a, an airport hub. So that narrowed it down to four different cities. So it was Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal, or Toronto. And I was already living in Toronto. Um, so uh, we looked into Montreal because that is actually where like the curve modeling um, place to be is. However, uh, through my research, I've noticed I noticed that you needed, you should be. It's highly suggested that you are bilingual when you live there, and so I'm like, mm, that's off the list because I'm not bilingual. Um, and then Vancouver would have the same challenges as Toronto, being too expensive to live. Um, and I'm not just talking about rent. I'm talking about um, purchasing a house. Scott and I. Uh, we're really struggling um, not owning a property as people who had owned for the last 10 years before moving to Toronto it was really hard for us to pay rent um, it's just a pride thing I think uh, but we want we have pride of ownership and we just wanted to have our own place to call home um, and Scott's super handy, so it's really not worth it for us to pay rent, per se. Like, some people, um, they worry about, like, the furnace, the shingles on the roof, like, the maintenance on the house, because that is a very big expense as well. But Scott can do a lot of that. So, um, for us to, um, to rent is, it's kind of a waste of money, personally. That's my personal opinion. Please don't shoot the messenger. That's just how we think. Um, and so we had looked in Toronto and there was just nothing like it had started at like 600,000 and that is for the bottom of the barrel. Like you need to put a hundred thousand dollars into it just to live in it. So we were like, ah, it's a little too steep. Plus there, they had like, um, land transfer taxes of like over $10,000 and all of the other additions um over and above everything and we were just like you know what it's just not it's not feasible for us to do this so um that took toronto and vancouver off the list so that left calgary and i was like do i want to move to calgary i don't know like it was hemming and hawing and months and months and months of talking i started looking at the real estate areas and all that kind of stuff and I'm like, you know what? It's closer to family, um, all that fun stuff. And so we spoke to a mortgage broker and the mortgage broker had said that uh, Scott needed, 
because we're both self-employed, Scott needed to work in the province for uh, at least two weeks um, and get a, a job offer and all that fun stuff. And so we sat there, hummed and hawed. This literally was months. Like this was not an overnight decision. It was not an easy decision on my part at all. Um, I was working at your big sister's closet and all that stuff. And although it wasn't, it's not... I wasn't making enough to stay in Toronto per se. Um, it was still a part of something that I loved to do and I couldn't have imagined leaving. So with the news of your big sister's closet, uh, the physical store closing, I thought I was out of a job. Like I thought that, I didn't know that they were gonna continue online. There was talks of it, obviously, but um, I didn't know when that was gonna happen, anything like that, and I couldn't afford to wait. And so I was like, you know what, maybe this is God telling me that I need to leave and like follow what Scott wants to do and like what his passions are and be closer to family and all that kind of stuff. And then during that time, my stepdad got really sick. He went into the hospital and I was crushed. I was like, I cannot believe that I can't go and just say hi to him like I'm so far away kind of thing yes I could have hopped on a plane and all that fun stuff but then the coronavirus happened and we were just like oh my god so um Scott had gotten a job um Scott got a job and got his offer and he had planned to leave the day that we left because he started work today Monday um and then I was going to leave at the end of May. Like I was going to give myself two months to kind of clear up. I had events and stuff already booked. So I gave myself two months to clear up everything. Um, and so uh, then the coronavirus hits and everything's being canceled and all that kind of stuff. And things are getting more and more and more and more and more serious. And I'm like, oh my God. There, I looked at Italy where like they literally get fined if they leave their house kind of thing and I'm like I could not imagine not being able at the end of the two months not being able to go and see my husband and live with my husband again like that just was not even an option and so it was literally two days before Scott left that I looked at him and I'm like I'm coming with you um, because I do not want to be separated any more than the two months. Like, I didn't want to even do the two months, but, um, circumstance had it a different way. So, I left with him, and now I'm in Calgary. Um, the, his new employer is incredible. He had a rental property that was a vacant, and so he is renting it to us for a fraction of what he typically rents it for. He is so so sweet like for not meeting either of us like he was just so kind to let us um crash here until we find uh, a house to purchase <sighs> so that is kind of the whole story behind like the reason we moved so it was to purchase a house to um be closer to family um and yeah we'll see kind of where life takes me but um here I am in, in, uh, in the place. Oh, I spoke about that for a long time. Let's see if I didn't answer any questions. Tell us again why. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that was it. Did you already move? Yes, I am in Calgary. How did the whole move go? Actually, it was pretty easy um, because we had such a small apartment. I was able, I had already started packing just because I'm kind of like that. But um, it was super easy just packing everything up. Um, we do still have stuff in storage in Toronto. So that, well, we have to come back and officially move all of our stuff. We had a 2,200 square foot house in Saskatchewan. So for the last two and a half years plus, we've had stuff in storage, which also, again, added to the monthly costs of rent and all that kind of stuff. So we were just like, we were done with the tiny space. We wanted somewhere to live. And I'm so excited to do a reno here in Toronto. Scott and I love working together and do it like doing all that kind of stuff in a house so um there is a market out here for it um especially now that the coronavirus hit um 
there is good coming out of it. Uh, the house prices will go down. Interest rates have already gone down. Like everything is weirdly in my world coming together in a set. Like it's in such a weird sense and I hate to even say that. Um, but like this is all happening so quickly and I think that there is a reason for all of this. Um, and I just, the, I, I sound bad for like saying that everything, like there are good things happening, but there are so many good things happening even though um, all of this craziness is happening around us. I just see good in it. Um, that's who I am. That's how I think no matter what I've been through. That's kind of how I think. I My heart goes out to those people who are affected by this um, and like obviously the people on the front line doing the work uh going to work every day with all of this so that's that that is my my little spiel of a video i hope you guys enjoyed this i want you guys i hope you guys are all staying safe please stay inside go outside for a walk or something but stay um six feet away from anybody who's walking as well <laughs> but uh i love you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know if you have any other questions i'm happy to answer any of the questions um but yeah love you Thanks for listening. <laughs>